News just broke out a few hours ago. North Korea is believed to be under May 2017's WannaCry cyber attack. Unlike older viruses and cyber attacks, it prevented the user from accessing their own operating system, encrypting all the data stored on the computer, and then demanded a ransom for users to get its data back. That is how it earned itself the name ransomware. Although I have not learned details on how we trace the attack to North Korea, I assume our modern-day detective homes must have concrete evidence. Actually, I was surprised to learn that WannaCry was not a high-tech worm. It used a virus called Eternal Blue by Shadow Brokers a few months before the attack. Eternal Blue found a backdoor into older Windows systems. However, many organizations lagged in applying the Microsoft patch timely. Many schools, hospitals, and small businesses became victims of the attack. Who should we blame? The funding shortage in many hospitals prevented them from upgrading to newer operating systems. Many government agencies had to go through a long testing process before applying new upgrades to software systems. It does not take a genius to call out an attack like this. An interesting question came to my mind after reading the news. If North Korea is behind the attack, does that mean anyone who succumbed to the ransom violated the UN sanction? If you paid $300 to get your data back, does that mean you should be punished for breaking the law? This ship is now banned from entering any port because of its business dealings with North Korea. When I read this news a few days ago, I wondered if all operators on that ship had to die of hunger, as they can't expect to drift forever. But now, I wonder about the fates of the WannaCry victims who had paid ransoms. Are they banned from surfing the net? I guess the best way to avoid this problem is to apply Windows updates and patches as soon as possible. This is Sharon. Thank you for watching.